Hi everyone, my name is Ali and please consider this video which I am recording right now uh, as a follow-up video, a follow-up session for Muhammad Ali Khalid's 5G link budget made easy video. So if you don't know the video I am referring to, I have it on my screen here and we will also post a link. So this is the video I am talking about, the 5G link budget made easy by Muhammad Ali Khalid where uh, he tried to simplify some of the 3GPP equations for the link budget and to estimate what is your cell radius and based on the cell radius of course you can calculate how many sites do you need in a certain specific area. So my objective in this video is not to go over each equation and uh, implement it ourselves. My objective is we first try to review the link budget parameters and after this review what we will try to do is we will try to understand what each parameter means and how important it is in our calculations and then I will try to show you uh, how you can use an online tool to calculate the cell range using the understanding from these parameters. So let's get started, let's get started on the first part which is what is linked budget. So I will try to simplify the definition and once again my recommendation if you haven't seen the video from Ali Khalid. Uh, do do check this video out because this is the base of what I'm going to explain right now. So the task when we are doing the link budget analysis, it's, it's it's simple. What we do is we try to find out all the gains. Gains here mean the transmit power which I have. Then of course anything which improves on this transmit power, which can be the antenna gains of the transmitter, the antenna gains of the receiver. Then I need to find out all the losses and the losses. Of course, the transmitter itself may have some cable losses, the feeder losses, then the receiver may have certain inbuilt losses. The transmission path itself will have a lot of loss, for example, rain, uh, snow, penetration loss uh, and so on. And then there will be the channel characteristics, for example, higher frequencies will have different kind of losses and with the distance, of course, uh, your path loss will increase. So all these losses and all these gains, we combine all of them, so in the end what we what we get is that from the transmitter, assume that my G node B here is my transmitter, my e, UE which is here is my receiver. So if I started from this place which was all my gains and then I came here after subtracting all my losses, I will end up with the received signal strength. So till now we did two things, we identified the transmitter, we identified the receiver and then we identified all the gains and losses and after this stage we finally reach a mathematical uh, equation for the received signal strength which will be at the receiver point of view. The last step is we have to determine is this received signal strength enough for the receiver. So from, uh, from a mathematical norm, from, from a more exact or technical term, this is dependent on the receiver sensitivity. So what happens is, uh, of course, the receiver is electronic in the end. So if you increase the temperature, if you increase the thermal noise, the performance of the electronics will be affected. So every design equipment has certain limitations on the bandwidth received. So it is dependent on the bandwidth, it is dependent on the temperature, it is dependent on your design parameters which is the noise figure and it is dependent on the CORI or the SINR of the received channel. So combine everything together. The, the device will have a specific performance threshold. For example, if at a given SINR the device can decode the transmission with say a bit error rate of 10% or less, then this transmission is acceptable or this SINR is acceptable. But there will come a time when, the, when after a specific SINR threshold, you cannot decode the transmission at the same error rate, let's say 10%. Usually for the LMR networks it used to be 5%, uh, my expectation for LTE and 5G it can be as, as high as 10% because in general we see 10% uh, used for the CQI definitions as well. So starting again from the transmitter, all the gains, subtracting all the losses, we get the received signal strength and the last step is we compare this received signal strength to what is my actual receiver sensitivity. So if my receiver sensitivity is better than the received signal strength, then definitely link budget is viable, there is no problem. You can use these power parameters at this distance and you will still make the transmission. However, if my UE receiver sensitivity is lower than this threshold, then it's a problem, which means your cell range 
is less than where uh, than the distance between u and the ue so this is what we are trying to to find out now for all this journey uh, you, you see that i have marked this path loss in blue and there is a reason for it so there are some parameters which are design parameters for example the power transmitted by the g node b it's a design parameter you should know this the losses within the g node b if it is not an aau system maybe it's an rou based system of course cable losses and, and so on you should know this same goes for the ue so the height of the ue of course you will know this uh, the distance between the ue and the base station you should know this before the calculation then comes some some of the other things which are more of experience based so the rain loss snow loss penetration loss foliage loss which is the vegeta vegetation loss and so on usually we assume specific values based on our experiences or sometimes uh, which is the right method we should actually try to use uh, the distributions the probability distribution functions for these specific things uh, some of being uh, some of these might be just uh, centered around uh, similar to a normal distribution uh, with a given standard deviation and you can find some of these things in 3gpp uh, channel modeling document as well this blue part the path loss as per uma slash rma this is the part where 3gpp has helped us so what they did was they tried to model the frequency characteristics from 0.5 gigahertz to 100 gigahertz okay and then they mapped it into certain scenarios they they named the scenarios as uma rma and the indoor office so in 3gpp document how it looks like this is in front of the screen right now so the scenarios RMA is for rural settings assume that it's a rural base station so there are less losses compared to urban UMA is the urban model so assume that it is probably the most restrictive model which has the highest amount of losses and then there is another discrimination which is the LOS or NLOS which is line of sight or non line of sight so for us of course in most of the cases we assume uh, i assume that my base station would be in urban settings and probably I, I i want to see the cell range when there is no los which is no line of sight so the equations valid to me would be in this quadrant uh if you go, if you go into deeper into the equations you will notice that the equations are not simple i mean the equations are not single equations they are pl1 and pl2 so the difference is when when modeling the channel what happens is the distance between the transmitter and the receiver until a certain limit this limit is called the breakpoint distance the channel characteristics are different so we follow equation number 1 and when your distance is greater than this breakpoint distance the channel equation becomes different and usually what happens is you add the previous loss and then you add more to it so so the loss characteristic after the breakpoint distance is different and the breakpoint distance itself for each kind of model is also defined in the 3gpp uh, document i think it is 38.190 uh, but i will i will post a reference in the uh, in the video as well so what are the parameters 3gpp takes into account so of course the frequency is very important the distance and when i say distance please remember that i will be talking about the distance 2d which is this distance the horizontal distance distance 3d can be uh can be calculated using pythagoras theorem based on this information and the height of the ue and base station then 3gpp also takes into account the street width the height of average buildings in the area and of course urban setting heights are different than the rural setting heights and so on so if you don't know something settle for a default case which which works out for you uh best so breakpoint distance as we discussed and the nlos versus los so if you want to go into more details if you don't want to take just an nlos uh, calculations the non line of sight calculations please take in, take this into account that there is a probability for los as well you can apply this to see how many how many percentage of times for example uh, the transmission will use los characteristics versus nlos characteristics if you want to be accurate with your own modeling so just to give you a brief summary uh, in ali khalid's video the equations uh, which were derived for you they were mostly coming from the uma models and los settings and of course the reason is simple because this is the most restrictive model so if you get a cell range of 100 meters from here any other model will give you a better cell range anyway so i think this is this is the idea from ali khalid so part 1 is done for me uh part 2 was introducing you uh, to an online calculator where you can do these calculations and explaining the parameters so first of all the shameless promotion disclosure i am the author of this uh, calculator 
uh, of course you can find others uh, so you're most welcome to use any but try to use the information which I'm trying to share you with, which is about the parameters related to the link budget. So if you use this nrcalculator.web.app, you can go to link budget calculations. Uh, the reading guide, I, I never read it myself, so you're most welcome to read it. There is a chart which I will explain to you. Uh, but I will first start from the parameters which are there. So if you see, there are system parameters. And this calculator assumes that it is a symmetric system. Symmetric means the bandwidth in the downlink is 100 megahertz and uplink is also the 100 megahertz bandwidth. Two points here. Uh, the bandwidth affects the receiver sensitivity. So the higher the bandwidth, uh, the different the receiver characteristics would be because uh, the receiver sensitivity depends on the KTV, the Boltzmann constant, the temperature and the bandwidth. Uh, the other point was, as I mentioned, this system assumes that it is symmetric. However, in 5G, we know it's not always the case. There will be 5G devices which can only use, which may only use a small bandwidth uh, uh, of the whole system. So if this is the case, you can change this parameter to the smaller value because this calculator tries to calculate both uplink and downlink at the same time. So you will have to adjust yourself based on your own scenarios. Then of course, we are assuming a typical 3.5 or 3.6 gigahertz of 5G deployment. We are assuming a 400 meter distance between the UE and the G node B. And again, this distance is the 2G distance over this line. Then we move on to the average building height and average street width. If you don't know these values, keep these. These are uh, from uh, the 3GPP default model settings for uh, RMA, I think. So you can keep whatever you want for this. Then comes the design parameters. You should know these values probably from your dumps and from your network settings. So what is your TX power? What is your TX and RX gain? So I'm assuming a very high gain antenna and a very high power antenna as well. Uh, consider this is an AU deployment. My height, uh, not my height, uh, I wish. No, no, I don't wish. Uh, the transmission height for the G node B. And then the cable losses, RX losses, uh, of course, I'm assuming them zero because of the AU uh, setting, which I have. Noise figure and the SINR target. So these are from the equation of the receiver sensitivity. If you don't know about the noise figure, keep it as 4 because in most design documents you will, you will see that 4 is uh, the value uh, used most often. The SINR for the sensitivity target. Now, for a G node B and especially a G node B with 6040-64R, this is uh, the value minus 3 is, is not, not very low. So, as a, as a rule of thumb, you can easily go to minus 6 for any setting and if you are using a really good E node B, good here means a higher order MIMO which uses all the antennas to decode and extract system information, you can even go to minus 16 safely for the G node B side. And of course, if you, if you make it lower, your link budget will improve. Then comes the UE parameters, link budget and the uplink will improve, sorry. UE parameters, of course, I'm assuming a normal UE, so I, my power is limited to 23. If you use LTE plus 5G, reduce this power because half power will go to LTE, half will go to the 5G. So uh, it will be 20. Uh, then the I'm assuming no antenna gains for the UE. I'm assuming 1.5 meter height for the UE and the TX cable losses are 0, 0. The noise figure again, you don't know it, keep it 4 and don't try to change this value. However, this minus 2 is again, it's, it's, it's not a practical value. I mean, usually we see that minus 4 to minus 6 is a more suitable value when we are trying to compare for a UE performance. And it's up to you to change it or keep it if you want a more restrictive cell radius for your calculations. Then comes the loss parameters. These are similar to what I said, which was the experience based parameters, like what is the rain loss, the penetration loss and so on. So as you can see, penetration loss, the vegetation loss, body loss, rain, snow, slow fading, interference margin. So interference margin is your margin because when you have more base stations, they will interfere each other as well. So it's better to, to have some margin here because this will also reduce your cell radius. After having all these uh, values and I hope, I really hope that you understand the parameters which I'm trying to explain because you can use any calculations, you can build your own. However, you should know what are these parameters and what is the role of these parameters. So, and, and the role is simple, all gains, all losses and the receiver sensitivity and that's it. And we are doing it for both uplink and the downlink direction. That's why we are taking into account all the uplink parameters and downlink as well. Coming back, let's let's see what happens when we press this button. So when we press the calculate link budget, you have a dialog box here which tells you your distance is 400 meters with a UMA propagation loss is 126 and the RMA propagation loss is 115. So the rural model has lower loss compared to the UMA 
okay Ex uh, i think we expect this uh, then it tells you what is the cell edge so your cell edge if you use an urban model on downlink is 845 meters if you use a rural model for downlink it is 1600 meters and for uplink it tells you 150 meters and 290 meters so definitely you can see it uh, very clearly that the cell edge is usually limited by uplink and which is I, I believe which is a very practical problem for us uh, because uplink power is limited compared to the downlink and which is why this limitation for us now let's see the chart the chart has the same information however it is organized like this so this is your path loss the y-axis and on x-axis you have your cell radius 500 meters 1 kilometer 1.5 2 kilometers and so on the two lines the blue and the orange line blue line is a path loss if you're using an urban model and orange line is a path loss if you're using a rural model so uh, how to read this chart is you you search for the dotted line the dotted line dotted red line is your propagation loss at which your downlink cell edge will happen so when this line meets one of your models so this red line meets the blue model somewhere around 845 it means my downlink cell edge is at 845 meters if i was using urban and it is going to be 1600 meters if i was going to use a rural model for downlink and if you see uplink my uplink model is here uh, uplink green dotted line is here so my uplink cell range is 150 meters or 300 200 meters uh, for rural so this is how you you try to visualize the results of the calculations try to read through it uh, my request if you find any errors any problems please report it you can connect to me uh, by connecting the uh, uh, by clicking the about box here or uh, i will try to post uh, a link as well and uh, thanks for watching i hope that it was useful for you and i hope that you learned something new thank you very much